Hi, my name is Seth Blackwell. Uh, I've been a member of this lodge. I was raised on January 2nd, 1990, so it's been 32 years. Uh, when I joined this lodge, um, I saw that there was a need and I saw that there was a lot of history with this lodge and I kind of fit right in. Went up through the chairs as master, uh, as district deputy, um, and uh, all throughout, uh, I've been a member of this lodge. I affiliated in, in Palmer to help them out. Uh, went through the chairs there, uh, but this is my home lodge. Over the years, uh, I saw uh, the uh, all the different papers and programs and everything in, in here. And it's, uh, it was fascinating. And I learned uh, through this lodge and uh, all the different programs that our first home as Quaybog Lodge mm -hmm. was across the street uh, where the gas station is now was above the tavern. Our second home that burned down. Our second home here was across the street over here. The building is not there. It's a parking lot now. And that, uh, they did a lot of work to that lodge or to that building. And they removed the first floor and dropped the building down and they ran out of a home there. Our third home was right next door. This is a very odd shaped building. And uh, uh, this came, this building was built after the one next door. The one next door was a hardware store and they had uh, residents above that. And on the third floor was a dentist, or on the second floor, I think it was a dentist. The third floor was the lodge. Fire burned the third deck off of the hardware store. This building we uh, moved into and they built in, I guess they started in early 40s, and they, they built this lodge room and all the other petitions up here. Uh, this building was a, uh, called the Ramsdell Hotel. This had a big column or spire on the front of the building and it was a beautiful, uh, beautiful entrance. Uh, as a matter of fact, one of the, uh, there was a fellow who used to live in town, John Leach, and he had moved to Greece and he came back to Warren again, his home. And uh, we had a uh, thief detecting society meeting up here. He was part of it. And it was the, the last time that he was in this building up here, it was a hotel. So that was kind of interesting to hear. And he told us all about it. Uh, but yeah, that's, this, is, uh, this is our home. It's been our home since 1942. Um, the town, of course, has changed quite a bit over the years with businesses coming and going. Um, I think they want to try to move the police department to a better building in Westbourne. Uh, we've lost our insurance company, we've lost our oil company, we've lost a pharmacy, um, a jeweler's. Uh, we used, this town used to be thriving and it is kind of slowing down quite a bit, uh, unfortunately, and people want things to change. So I guess we're stuck. You look around this building and I see all the programs again and, and what we've done and, and, and where we've been, you know, over the years. And then when things start to get cleaned out like this, you think, hmm, you look around, oh, 
I bought those fire extinguishers or made up the first aid kit or, um, oh, I had forgotten about this book here. Um, brought up some showcases so we could display some of that stuff and show the members, yeah, we've got a lot of good stuff up here. People have donated a lot of things to this lodge. Um, so, you know, it, it's, it's been my home watch, kind of, kind of real sad to see it go, but, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, and especially, I guess I should have started out with this, but, uh, I've been secretary of this lodge since 1998. So, being secretary, everybody contacts you, everybody asks you the questions, you look into things, and yeah, you learn a lot. One of our members even wrote a book about uh, uh, masons that were in the Quaybog Plantation. The Quaybog Plantation is, what is it, over 350 years yeah. old. Mm -hmm. And there were lodges there, and he wrote a book about all the different lodges that were in existence. So that's kind of fascinating. It's just a little pamphlet, I've scanned it, but, uh, and just so we have it, I don't know, you brought that to your... Yeah, I don't have you know, it, I got it at home. Okay, yeah, you've got it at home. That's good, that's good to have. Uh, it's, it's a neat little history. That was Jim Geist that wrote that, so. Uh, I guess I really don't know exactly what else to, to tell you. Anybody got any questions about uh, that? Maybe you would jog, jog my memory a little bit too. Ooh, anybody got any questions? This is yes, this is no. <laughs> <laughs> one question, right, Worshipful. Um, one question, right, Worshipful. Do you know if we still have the original written bylaws of Carmel Lodge? The bylaws of Carmel Lodge are in the, under the cover, the first cover before the first page of our bylaw book. They were given to me by Cliff Rudder and uh, his dad was secretary for a good long time and he had them and he had the plans too, the plans for this lodge are right here. Um, I don't know if you've got a picture or anything at the, the front door of the lodge. No, that's a, that's a pretty front door. When I joined, this this was on there, and we had uh, wooden square encompasses made up below, and then we took these down, and we uh, and we had a uh, a guy that prints and puts all that stuff up on the doors. I, the bank had it done, and I asked, and I caught him, and he says, "Oh, sure." So we had that put up. It's kind of Kind of a neat thing. I like that. I think that's going to go on our way out, isn't yep, it? Yep, we've got that secured. Yeah. yeah. Now, one thing when I was starting to box stuff up, I may have missed it, but the earliest minutes I found were 1868 or thereabouts. Mm -hmm. Do you know if we have any minutes prior to that, going back to 1858, or were those maybe lost in the fire? They may have been lost in the fire, uh, or one of the fires. The only thing that I can think of possibly, uh, uh, if we have minutes like that is in that safe, there's an envelope. Yep. In that envelope, there's a stack of paper about that thick with the edges all burned. And looking at the condition that that envelope is in, in the condition of the pages, I'm afraid if I opened that up, they'd turn to dust. <laughs> that could be the minutes. That could be the minutes. So even like the Thief Detecting Society, they, wherever they met, and it was probably up here a lot, um, they uh, lost their original minutes in a fire also. Things were transcribed, things were written here. So, uh, just had something else. The membership of this lodge in the 1860s 
through the 1900s, early 1900s, was extremely vibrant. Um, visitors to this lodge came from all across New England, New York State, because I've looked at the visitors register. And I don't know, I haven't looked to see what the membership of the lodge was in the late 1800s, but it was probably approaching 200 members, if not more. But the visitors register are a wealth of people visiting from across New England to come here to uh, the sawmill capital, maybe, of, of central New England. Yeah. The, um, I think the Thief Detecting Society met up here a couple of times. I know when they were doing work at the Federated Church, which is not the Federated Church anymore, it's another Catholic church in town, I think, um, that they met here on Sundays. Because, um, of course, a lot of the people that belong to the lodge also were in the Federated Church. Um, there was a group uh, above the, the old post office, which is the drugstore, which is Mason's Grill now. Uh, above that was the uh, Oddfellows, International Order of Oddfellows. And um, when I joined here, we had the, uh, it was the Rebecca's that also met here. Pretty nice. Um, we did have a, uh, a Royal Arch chapter, King Solomon's Lodge mm -hmm. here. And I remember one time I used to work in the hardware store, which was next door of the drive through is now. But uh, one, one kid was digging in the backyard and found a coin and he came down to the hardware store and asked me about it. And yeah, that was one of the, the coins you got. I got that at the house. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of, this is just a lot of history and a lot of stories. So many friends, so many brothers uh, that met here. And uh, the one that I, uh, I can't remember the fellow's name, but I've heard it two or three times that uh, when they came here, a lot of lodges, you know, when you go into them and, you know, nobody, you know, they'll check you or something, you know, and, you know, before you can allow, be allowed in. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, they said this was an extremely friendly lodge, the friendliest lodge they've been in. And that, that kind of stuck with me. And we're going to continue that. Uh, with West Brookfield, in West Brookfield, and, and uh, yeah, and we'll go on from there. Agreed. This history could be <clears throat> from any lodge, a big city lodge to a small town lodge like this. Uh, this is what I call the local history that we are going to lose. So uh, for you guys out there who love Masonic history, uh, start collecting from whatever you can from guys like this guy, guys like this guy that's in your lodge because they are a wealth. They're old men, they're cranky, they're grumpy, but they know the history of your lodge. So seek them out, ask them, sit down with them, do an interview with them, and take them, write down whatever they, whatever you do, even doing a video like this. It's well worth for the history uh, of your lodge. Thank you very much, for, brother, for, for your time today. Thank, Thank you all. You.